Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be BSL Season 13, Group B. The winner's match between Rancor and Jedi 1. Well deserved for both these players. Bottom right and corner, we have Jedi 1 starting as the Midnight Blue Protoss. Bottom left and corner, we have Rancor starting as the Brown Zerg. And this is going to be on Wavelet. Actually, I had to do a quick restart because it's like, I didn't check the map. And is this Wavelet? It's Wavelet. For, for what are my brain... Something about having Vertebrae in the map pool and also having Goodnight in the map pool made me doubt myself for a half second. I'm like, wait a minute. Anyway, Rancor, very strong Zerg player. I really enjoy his early aggressive style. He's very good at keeping his opponents off balance. It's actually unfortunate that we actually would like to see a match between Rancor and Exit in particular. I think Exit would be favored in that matchup, but I, th I think that would be an entertaining match. Pylon being dropped to the natural expansion for Jedi 1. Overlord looks like it's going to be scouting the upper left-hand corner initially. It looks like Jedi 1 is going to get the initial scout out. Overlord first build forced, uh, for Rancor. But Rancor, it just seems he has a really strong balance between both aggression, keeping his opponent off balance, and being able to macro behind it. And just finds ways to sneak back into matches or be in his opponent's face and just have the perfect amount of units that allows him to drone up. I think oftentimes there's kind of different styles of Zerg play. And it's just refreshing to see this style of Zerg, where it's the I'm going to be aggressive up front rather than just trying to build the exact amount of units I need to defend uh, from there. Not sure how well it scales, but I think, uh, I don't know, it's a solid play style. Probe stealing some minerals. Doing that little kiki key, key, key thing behind it. Looks like we're, we got an overpool build here, here. There is a forge first with that overpool build. I believe you can go Nexus. I think you, you don't need to uh, dedicate the double cannons. But Rancor, going to go ahead and plop one down. Yeah, I think you can go one cannon, Nexus cannon. Is the way that works? Uh, should pay more attention to that. Nice pylon block from Jedi 1 to go ahead and disrupt that expansion. That also potentially will slow down Zerglings. Four Zerglings being built. Off-center hatchery and a cancel pylon at the natural. So Rancor just showing that, okay, either I'm going really aggressive with this to follow up, and it looks like it's just going to be the two cannon dedication. Preventatively, because he didn't get a good eye on the larva being spawned, it looks like an extractor is uh, being built as well. Kind of an odd play for Rancor. And granted, he's still critically going to be able to mine that gas decently efficiently. But yeah, we'll, we'll see how that plays out overall. The four Zergling's going to wander forward. Certainly going to hurt him even more economically. One Zergling down. That is the advantage of dropping the two cannons. As you know, at least that first Zergling is going to get swatted. Three hatchery play. Jedi 1 potentially going for a cannon rush in this back line. Now, this isn't a full seal location. The Zerglings are making their way back. So I'm not sure that this is going to be successful, but it's a, well, maybe. It's a clever idea. He's blocking the ramp now. Keep in mind, there is this gap here. This hatchery keep, doesn't see it, so you can see the vision from this side of things. There's that first photon cannon warping in. A second pylon here blocks Jedi 1 in. That cannon still has exposed surface area, but the probe can't be attacked. And this, is, this might be a quick win for Jedi 1. Jedi 1 moving out. Well, does the drone see it? The drone sees the cannon now. The Zerglings are pulling off the line. The probe actually walking up to plop a second cannon and engage that initial ling. It dies, but that's two cannons on the front door that are at the very least going to disrupt a, this hatchery and force a lot of Zerglings to be built. The second Photon Cannon very likely will morph in before there's sufficient defense. So Rancor's early economy taking a lot of big hits, plus a Zealot marching up. And I'm almost wondering if a second Probe is going to sneak out as well. Cybernetic Score warping in, just in case. We do have a Morph Delayer and a Spire behind this, but missing that second gas and mining at that natural expansion really, really puts a lot of hurt on the ability to respond to this. Second Zealot's going to go ahead and back off towards the main just in case there is a large counterattack. The hatchery looks like it is going to get taken out by these cannons, so Jedi 1 with that sneaky 
with the sneaky sneak cannons with big wins early on. 10 Zerglings out. All he needs to make sure is that he has sufficient anti-air and he should be in a solid position to cap this match. Spire about halfway finish, but keep in mind this is going to be one base mining worth of, of Mutalisks. There's the, st the Stargate to produce the Corsairs. Plus, there's the problem for Rancor of needing to take his natural expansion. Because he has already dedicated a lot. It looks like his solution to this is, okay, I know I'm in a bad economic spot. Let me go ahead and take that 6 o'clock location. That Corsair, unfortunately taking this space, I almost wish that Rancor had grabbed a different space different location, maybe the 9 o'clock, maybe even the upper left-hand corner. Because grabbing this expansion as well, it's going to be a beeline for this Corsair once it's produced to make its way to Rancor's base. Mutalisk's on the way. Oh, that Corsair might be a little bit late. But it's only going to be three Mutalisks. That Zealot wandering too far out, getting wiped out. The Zerglings now pressing in. It looks like they still having trouble because of the surface area taking out these cannons. So the cannons still remain. Scourge also being produced. So Rancor is still going to try to make a match of it. More zealots marching their way out. Level 1 weapons on the way. It's kind of an afterthought more than anything. A cannon warping in. First Corsair making its way. The Mutalisks making their way to the natural expansion where two cannons are already in place. No second gas, by the way. The Mutalisks trying to harass these zealots. But if these zealots can just get to this cannon line, that will be a defensive slot. One advantage for Rancor is that Jedi 1 did not maneuver the Corsair across that 6 o'clock location. This is actually an impressive amount of Mutalisks. Given, and a drone's actually pulling off the line trying to attack this. It looks like they are going to be able to clear these Zealots up. This is an impressive amount of Mutalisks given this is off a single base. This Zealot able to force a bit of damage, but these Mutalisks are just going to go ahead and clear what's left of these cannons before engaging the rest of the field. So Jedi 1 with... A couple free losses here. One Mutalisk. Well, I thought one Mutalisk was going to be left behind. The Scourge patrolling around. Three Mutal or three Corsair have been produced. I'm wondering if weapons won. No, no weapons won for Jedi 1. That would have really capped things. Handful of cans at the main. Jedi 1 still needs to make sure he stays sharp. Stay frosty. Doesn't realize that this 5 o'clock base is up. Now Rancor can potentially, once he takes out this pylon, that would be the safe way to do it. To proceed from there. Rancor definitely behind in the overall economic count. But honestly, I feel like Jedi 1 should be further ahead in the midst of this. He hasn't plopped down additional gateways. He does have a decent-sized Corsair army. Once he has six Corsairs out, that will be challenging to deal with. Getting a Templar Archives, it looks like he wants to move into Corsair DT in the mid-game. Still no second gas for Rancor in the midst of this. But Rancor still... Able to feel, uh, somehow able to field something. He's got seven Mutalisks out. Corsair production stopping now at the five count. Again, no level one weapons. And right now, it, he's not being aggressive, which is allowing. And I, the thing is, knowing Rancor's play style, this is not what you want to hand over to Rancor. If you uh, don't play aggressive against him, he will macro on you. And that is exactly what he's doing. Plopping down additional hatcheries. Got the Hydralis done down. Now all of a sudden he's in... He's still way behind economically. Let me put it that way. Still way behind economically. But he's shifting into 5 hatch Hydralisk. Which is actually going to be a decent response. Finally the 6th uh, and it looks like a 7th Corsair being produced. Which will be a decent response to this. Level 2 weapons being upgraded. So Jedi 1 still with the lead. But Rancor making a game of it. Bunch of Corsairs moving up. The Hydralisks, handful of Hydras there to engage. That plus the Mutalisks might be able to save Overlords and other things. Plus the Scourge diving into everything in between. And that Corsair army just eating a ton of free damage. The Mutalisks should be able to clear out what's left. And that is a huge investment from Jedi 1 that just got obliterated off the field. Four Mutalisks still survive. And all of a sudden, Jedi 1, I'm still going to say, has the advantage. A sizable economic lead. But Rancor is now sitting at three bases. If he can defend this DT, he is going to be in a solid position. He's already doing everything. Uh, 
to be in that situation. Level one spines being upgraded, starting to field some hydralisks, has a decent sim city, has the sunken colony here with those overlords, and the overlord's still standing, so Dark Templar aren't going to be able to sneak into that base. Overlord's slowly sneaking forward to go ahead and check that three o'clock location. Zelt leg speed coming online, and Rancor. I'm going to say it. I think Rancor has map control all of a sudden. As soon as he gets Overlord uh, Phenomenized Carapace, which is upgrading on the way, he's going to be in a strong position. He's also droning up behind this. And this is what I mean by, like, Rancor just seems to have this ability to find space, to be aggressive, get his opponents off balance, and then macro. Very interesting style. Escort for this drone. It's going to be a slow escort to potentially take an additional base. Mutalisk's flying out. I think they want to check that 3 o'clock base. Jedi One has produced a large amount of Zelts. He has that High Templar on the front, but he's a ways off having, I think, the map control he wants to go ahead and establish additional bases. Psy Storm being produced there. Dark Templar somewhere to the north. Overlord still camping over that 3 o'clock. And I like the Overlord spread. Like Rancor doing a pretty good job playing map control. Also going to be able to take out this probe that was looking to take that five o'clock base. And all of a sudden, Jedi One being starved out of a third with very little effort from Rancor. It looks like he's going to march up a lot of zealots into the three o'clock location. I kind of like that he's doing this. Maybe he's going to move up a probe now. Overlord speed online. However, without anti-air, these zealots are going to be vulnerable to the mutalisks. And the Mutalus able to sneak in and pick off that probe. Are you kidding me with this? Rancor with the game sense. Psystorm catching a little bit of those Mutalisks. But that's further going to delay that third base. And now Rancor at nearly 40 drones. Getting Carapace 1. Has double evolution chambers. Might be able to against the single forge. Is there a second forge being built? No, there's only a, the single forge behind this. So level one, level two weapons moving to level three. He's going to be behind in upgrade as far as far as uh, just straight weapon versus weapon play. He's moving ahead a little bit in tech because I still don't see. So there's a robotics facility, the observatory coming online as well. But he's sneaking right back into this match. 53 probes for Jade One, but a very late third comparatively. The Dark Templar being picked off by the Mutalisks. Trying to escape, but just getting hounded by that Overlord. A bunch of High Templar moving to this location as well. As Jedi One trying to establish some positioning. It looks like some Lurker is moving forward. Getting aggressive now. Pressing into the 5 o'clock base. The Corsair eating a lot of damage to that Spore Colony. The rest of the units starting to press up. They don't have an Observer. The Corsair gets taken out. There are High Templar to drop Psystorm overhead, but some Lurkers and Hydralisks are to the north. The Mutalisks looking to catch High Templar. The High Templar trailing from the south, so it looks like they're going to be fine. Jedi One still with a much larger army, a huge supply lead off that economic lead in between, is now establishing that third base. Actually, I almost want to see him grab a potentially additional base behind this. Rancor grabbing that 9 o'clock location, though. And teching to Hive. <clears throat> Carapace 1 is going to finish momentarily. Handful of Psy Storms. Right now, Jedi 1 doesn't just have... Basically, it would come down to Lurker positioning to get an advantage uh, for Rancor in the midst of this. Because that level 2, soon to be level 3 weapons, is just going to hit very, very hard against the level 0 Carapace of Rancor. But Rancor, keep in mind, does have double evolution chamber. Usually, you want to have... If you're at an upgrade disadvantage, you at least want to have a supply count lead, which is not what Rancor has. An Observer moving up. The Lurker's going to burrow. They are going to be able to hit a lot of these Zealots, but this entire army just swarming. So a bit of a misstep for Rancor, losing all of those Lurkers. Also, his Hydralisk army out of position to engage this. And Jedi One now pressing towards that natural expansion. There is a decent Sim City in front of this, but there's only a single Sunken Colony. There's still that upgrade advantage. It's just a larger army. Jedi One turning on the macro switch. He might just be able to end the game right here. Engaging the army to the north. Huge Psy Storm catching not just the Mutalisks, but also the Hydralisks and softening them up to the north. Now he can honestly just take the game. 
But it looks like he is happy to just hunt down his opponent's army while he grabs the 3 o'clock. And it looks like Rancor, in the midst of this, going to make the best of a bad situation. Drawing the army all the way back is just going to clear out that 3 o'clock base. This is clever. Blocking with the Lurker Eggs. Picking off Observers. And trying to delay that Nexus. Doesn't look like that's going to happen just because there's too many troops moving in too rapidly. But it was a nice thought. I like the maneuver from Rancor regardless. More Zealots marching forward to test this front door. There are Lurkers in this back corner, but I don't think... This is still going to chew through a lot of troops, particularly with that level... Three weapons. Just eating these units alive. Now moving into that Lurker line. Making their life short. But Jedi 1 with the level 3 weapons. 60 supply count lead. Starting to press into Rancor. Rancor trying to sneak. Well, it looks like actually just Mutalist in the upper right corner. I thought he was going to try to sneak a base up there. Rancor doing a good job of getting some Zerglings on top of the Dragoons. But honestly, all of this feels too little too late. This seems like it's just too large an army. Doing a lot to stay in this match and keep it spicy. But Jedi 1 just turning on the macro switch, building a beastly army, getting on top of the Lurkers of the natural expansion. I just do not think Rancor has sufficient troops to defend this. Lurkers coming in from behind, Zerglings filtering in as well. A lot of Psystorm being dropped to clean that up. The Observer out of position to defend it, but the natural expansion is breached. A hatchery down. Probably two hatcheries momentarily. The Observer swing back around to go ahead and clear up that flank. And Zerglings being engaged almost as an afterthought as there's GG from Rancor. So game one convincingly going to Jedi 1 through some shenanigans and some nice macro to crush it out. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll move to game two momentarily. Thanks for listening.